Welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'll be sharing my new series on how to program a Discord bot with Discord.js version 14 in 2024. Some of you may remember that I made a similar series last year, but I feel as though I need to make a new series to improve upon the past series. If you're new here, my channel is all about teaching you how to program, more specifically, a Discord bot. All videos are viewer requested, so feel free to leave a comment below or join the Discord server linked in the description to hang out or get support. Before we begin, I would like to give a brief shout out to my own Discord bot, GoldenBot. It has been growing a lot recently and now manages over 2300 servers along with half a million members. I can't thank you all enough for the support. Links will be in the description. In order to program our Discord bot, there are a couple of things we need to download first. First being Node.js. Node.js will allow us to run our JavaScript code outside of a web browser. I would personally recommend downloading the long-term support version which you can see here on the left of my screen as it is less likely to have bugs and is more common version that most end up using. Our second requirement is a code editor. I would highly recommend Visual Studio Code for its relatively beginner friendly design and it's totally free. You can also use other code editors if you'd like, but I will be using Visual Studio Code for all of my videos. So if you'd like to follow along, be sure to download it as well. Again. All links will be in the description of this video for easy access. Now that we have everything we need installed, it's time to make our folder or directory for our code. I'll be making mine in the C drives directory, but you can also make it on your desktop or wherever you please, as long as you remember where you put it. You can open your file explorer faster if you are on Windows by pressing Windows and E. I'm going to go onto my main directory here under this PC, then local disk, and then I can create it in here. New folder, and I'm going to Call this tutorial bot. But of course you can name it however you like. Now we have an empty folder. We can close our file, file explorer. Now that we have our folder set up, and now you can open up Visual Studio Code. You search for it, and then here we are. This is your landing page, your standard welcome page. It gives you some quick action start as new file, open file, open folder, etc. We can close that tab. Now there are a few important things that are often overlooked by many users, but it's very important for the sake of not forgetting that we enable autosave, as many people end up forgetting to save their project before running it again. So make sure to enable autosave, it is indicated by this little check mark. Also while you're at it, feel free to explore the settings at the bottom left of your screen to adjust the font size to your liking. I also recommend that you set the tab size to be 2 as it keeps your code a bit more compact. So if I go into my settings, you can just search for whatever you're looking for. Make sure your tab size is set to two. You can leave it at the default of four if you like, but I would highly recommend that you set it to two. And now if we just type in font, it pops up with font size and all these other settings if you'd like. I'm gonna set mine to 18 for the sake of this video. And also I'm going to edit my terminal. Terminal font, and it is also 18. This way it'll be easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Now that we've set up our settings, we can open up our folder that we just created. Go into file, open folder. Mine is in this PC, local disk, and tutorial bot. Click select. Again, we can close this welcome window. And this is our explorer. This is where all your files are gonna be displayed. I would personally recommend minimizing the open editors as it gets a bit clustered. And you'll also see them up at the top of your screen. If you accidentally close your explorer tab, don't worry. It's just on the left hand side of your screen up at the top near file. You can just open it again. Now we're going to make a new terminal, which will allow us to get started. A few options to the right of the file option. You will see terminal up at the top. Select it and then select new terminal. This will open a new terminal at the bottom of our screen and will be set to our main folder. Now run npm init dash y to create a new node project followed by npm i discord.js to install the discord.js package from the node package manager. This will create our new project. And as you will see, there is now a package.json file. Now we will come back and we will type in npm followed by i or install, it is up to you, discord.js. If you accidentally install a package, just change it from install to uninstall and then run the command again. But otherwise we're just gonna do npm install discord.js or npm i discord.js. Now you'll see that it has been added to our package.json. Right here you'll see under the list of dependencies we will have discord.js and my current version is 14.14.1. We don't need this so I'm gonna close it at the top. Now we have to create a couple of folders. You may also see that there is now a node modules folder you don't have to worry about this, but this is essentially where all of the code is for these modules. And there is also a package lock.json. This just keeps track of all of the specific dependencies within each of the packages that you add. Now we will go ahead and we will create 
a couple of new files. You can go up here to the top where the little new file option is right next to the folder name, or you could right click and click new file. This one is going to be called index.js and the next one is going to be called config.json. We're gonna start with our config.json file and we are going to start by making a set of curly brackets. You can often find the key to make curly brackets near your enter and backspace keys in combination with your shift key. Now we're going to go between the two brackets and press enter in order to open them up. We will make a pair of quotation marks and inside of these we will type in token. We will go to the right of the quotation marks, add a colon, and then we will add another pair of quotation marks. We will come back to that later. Now we need to go to the discord.dev website. So if you see here, you'll be brought to this page. Up at the top left, click applications and make sure that you sign in on the correct account. Now click the new application button and name it however you like. You can change this later, so it's totally up to you. If you have an option for team, I would probably recommend leaving it on personal. Also, don't forget to agree to Discord developer terms of service and developer policy. Click create. And here you can edit the name, description, and a few other details. Now we're gonna head over to the OAuth 2 tab and select the URL generator. We're gonna select the following boxes. We're going to select bot and applications.commands. We're going to give our bot administrator by default when we add it because we should be able to trust our own Discord bot. We're gonna click copy and we're gonna open this URL in a new window. Here you will see your Discord bot. It's requesting to be added to a server and create commands in that server. Now you can select the server that you'd like to add it to and click continue. Make sure to authorize it with administrator and confirm that you're human. As you can see, the bot is now in your server and you may be wondering, why is it offline? And well, that's because we're not running it yet. It's not doing anything. That's next. Come back to our developer page and we're gonna go ahead and get our Discord bot token so that we can sign it in and it'll be online. We're gonna head over to the bot tab on the left. We're gonna click reset token, click yes, do it. And if you have two-factor authentication configured on your device, you might have to enter a two-factor authentication code. Now that I have put my two-factor authentication code in, I have access to the token. Make sure you click copy and it will turn green to show you that it was copied. While we're on this page, we're also gonna make sure that it's a public bot if you want it to be able to be added to other servers. In my case, I don't necessarily need this to be able to be added to other servers, so I'm going to disable this. And for our privileged gateway intents, I would recommend that you turn on all of them so that you don't have to remember to turn them on in the future when you might need them. Make sure to save changes and we're good to go. Make sure to never share this with anyone as it's basically a password to your Discord bot. Go back to your config.json file and paste it in. You can do that either by right clicking between the two quotation marks and click paste, or you can use a shortcut, which is control and V. Obviously, I will be resetting my token again immediately after uploading this video to protect myself from anyone with malicious intentions from controlling my bot. Make sure if it ever does get out, you go back and reset your token as fast as possible. Now that we're done with our config.json file, we can close that. Here's the fun stuff. We get to write some code. First things first, we have to import a couple of things. Firstly, we're gonna import from discord.js. We're gonna start this with const. In other words, constant, as in it does not change. And we're going to do those curly brackets again. And we're gonna say equals require normal brackets and then quotation marks. And we're going to say discord.js. Then we're gonna to come to the end of this line and finish it off with a semicolon to say we're done on that line. Now we're gonna go down and say const again, more curly brackets, equals require. And now we're going to say dot slash config.json. Make sure that your index.js and config.json file are in the same directory or folder. Otherwise you will have to adapt this accordingly, which I'm not going to be explaining further in this video. Now back in the first curly brackets for discord.js, we're going to put in client. Make sure it is capital as it is case sensitive. Now we're gonna go down to the config.json brackets and we're going to put in token so we can get our token from the other file. Now we're gonna go down a couple of lines and in lowercase, we're going to say const client equals new client and then brackets again and end it off with a semicolon. Go down a couple more lines and we're going to say client.login token. Essentially what we're doing here is we're getting the client from discord.js 
and then you're getting your token from the config file, which is like your password. And now we're saying const lowercase client equals a new client. And what this is saying is this client here, the lowercase one is a new version or instance of this main client. And we can say client.login with the token. Now you may be asking, why did we put token inside of a different file? Why can't we just put it right here in client.login? And sure you could, but it's a lot less secure if you're sharing your code with someone or you're trying to get help from someone or you're helping someone else, it's a much better idea to have it in this separate file that if you're having trouble in the index.js file, nobody's gonna be able to see what your token is if you were to just copy this code and paste it into Discord. Now there's one other thing I forgot to do earlier, and that is we have to put some more curly brackets within the client constructor, and we're going to type in intents. We're gonna do colon, and we're going to do square brackets like that, which signifies an empty array because we're saying it does not have any intents. You may or may not need to specify this depending on your version of discord.js, but in my case I did. Now if you come back down, we can do node space dot, and this will start up our discord bot, as long as you did everything correctly that is. Now if you ever need to stop a running process in a terminal, the general rule is control and C, and that'll stop it. And as we can see, if we come over to discord, there's the tutorial bot, and look at that, it's online. Now obviously it doesn't have any commands yet, but that's coming up in future videos. Stick around because in the next few videos, we're gonna go in depth about making commands, learning about how different Discord features work, such as buttons, select menus, models, and more. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please make sure to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my Discord bot and server. See you soon.